Uh, my talk is about the spatial heterogeneity of methane emission from uh, peatland in the northern hemisphere. And let's start by uh, just some reminder about methane emission, because I'm sure that most of you know um, already a lot about methane. It's the second uh, anthropogenic greenhouse gases after CO2 and is uh, atmospheric concentration have been multiplied by 2.6 uh, um, compared to uh, uh, pre-industrial era. And it's um, account for 23% of the accumulated total radiative forcing. Um, in order to study the changes on that atmospheric concentration, the global methane budgets have established, um, based on, on literature, um, the balance between sources and sink uh, that are uh, from natural sources and from anthropogenic sources. Uh, and uh, most of those estimates are based on uh, what they call bottom up and top down approach. So the bottom up approach are from a process based model, whereas a top down approach are from an inversion model. And what we are going to look at today is more the emission uh, coming from wetlands because they are the main natural sources that have been established with that budget. And so here you can see the distribution of the methane emission from wetland and they also established that uh, this source uh, has the largest uncertainty uh, within the budget. Uh, and so what is a little bit wetland? Wetland have been defined by the Ramsar Convention of wetland uh, to be uh, sorted in different classes. And uh, the main classes that has been studied and implemented in process-based model are the palustrine wetland, and they're also called in the literature a uh, peatland. Uh, and most of those peatlands are located in the Northern hemisphere and that uh, account uh, for the methane emission in the wetland uh, of the uh, global methane budget. Oops. Uh, yeah. And so those, to give you a, a better picture of those uh, peatlands, uh, they are highly productive and they accumulate a lot of carbon in the soil uh, and, um, because the decomposition of the carbon is very slow. Uh, their ecosystem is dominated by a uh, phagnum. Uh, and as you can see here in those picture, it can be covered with a very diverse uh, vegetation from trees, bushes, or grass. But in, in each of the cases, uh, in each the Northern latitude, those uncertainty is uh, still high, and to understand those uncertainty, we need to understand the processes that uh, they are represented in process-based model between permafrost, soil carbon, and uh, the emission of the greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. And the model that I use that I'm working with is the uh, orchidea land surface model, and we have a version with peat and methane emission. Uh, that come from um, about um, more than 10 years of work of various people to uh, add uh, permafrost and snow process, uh, the peatland hydrology and the carbon dynamic, and then I added uh, the methane model on top of all that. So the, the peatland are represented uh, with a vertical discretization of the carbon stock, uh, the energy budget depends on the carbon content and the hydrology have been modified in order to reduce the, the infiltration and to contain more water in the soil carbon. And obviously the vegetation functional type have been adapted to reproduce a peatland ecosystem. Uh, whereas the methane model uh, is taking the soil carbon uh, and uh, um, the methane production from that 
those carbon pool is es estimated. And that stock of uh, methane can be then oxidized into CO2 to be emitted to the atmosphere or a uh, flux uh, from the soil to the atmosphere is um, represented with uh, uh, an equation for plant transport, diffusion, and ebullition. So after uh, I implemented uh, that model, then you have to calibrate um, parameters. And in, in that um, formulation, we have seven parameters corresponding to all those different processes to calibrate uh, for the northern site. So, so the standard approach to uh, calibrate a model at global scale, it's to take a chamber measurement or eddy covariance flux tower from different sites and do an optimization for each of those sites. And then the parameters are average uh, to be used at global scale. But for Orchidae, we have a tool that is a data assimilation, uh, specifically that could be applied on Orchidae model. So it's called Orchidas. Uh, and we look at uh, the sensitivity uh, of the optimization if we do it on site, on each of the sites, or if we do that optimization considering all sites uh, together. And to do that optimization, we use a genetic algorithm method coupled with a cost function minimization approach that have been described in uh, Bastrikov and Al in 2018. And once we had both of those optimization, we compare uh, methane flux in the model, uh, estimated by the model with observation and extrapolate it to global scale. So before doing the optimization, we have to define the initial state of our model and determine um, at each site uh, the peat maximum uh, depth so the, the amount of carbon that is accumulated in the soil uh, over various depths. Um, the peat growth rate was uh, optimized uh, in a previous study, and we used uh, the observed climatology to force the simulation. And, and to do those optimization, we use the data from uh, the 14 peatland sites and in the next slide, all the sites are always sorted from uh, the one that emitted the least to the one that uh, have a very high uh, methane emission. So what you can see here are the site on the x-axis, uh, the observation methane fluxes uh, that are observed are in gray. In blue is the methane fluxes estimated by the model using the parameters that have been optimized on single site optimization. And in orange are the methane fluxes estimated by the model using the multiple site optimization. And that's what we expected uh, to have the single site optimization to work better than the multi-site optimization. But what we want to know is how good or, I mean, acceptable or not acceptable is to um, average the parameters or to do a, a multi-site optimization. So in order to compare uh, how good or bad is uh, the optimization, I did uh, the subtraction of the observation flux with the single site flux. Uh, and so the gray bar with the blue bar and the gray bar with the orange bar. And that's what you have here. So for most of the sites uh, that emitting in uh, average amount of methane, uh, the difference is not too, um, too high, but for N member, like uh, the side that emitting the most, there is a strong underestimation of um, methane, but in both case, and uh, for the side that emitting the least, we have an overestimation when we do a multi-site optimization. So when you take that and you extrapolate to the global northern peatland area, uh, then you can estimate that 
uh, with the single site optimization, you underestimate by 37% compared to the observe. Uh, and with multi-site optimization, we overestimate by uh, 50%. So the, neither the single site optimization or multiple site optimization is better uh, to um, upscale at global scale, but um, it, uh, the question is what happened on the end member site? Can we understand why we have uh, those under and uh, over uh, estimation of methane in order to improve our model? And so what we found out is that for the sites that are large emitter, uh, so in gray, you have the gray bar or still the observed methane fluxes and the brown bar or soil organic carbon that is uh, available for methanogenesis. And uh, we noticed that these uh, carbon content is very low for those three sites. And so that's uh, pretty much um, indicates that the methanogenesis for those sites are uh, substrate limited in our model. So we are missing a process that can um, provide enough carbon for methanogenesis because we do have enough carbon, but not um, a carbon that is available for that process. Oops. And for the uh, sites that are underestimate, uh, when we look at uh, the different methane transports, so we have diffusion, plant-mediated transport, and ablation, uh, we can see that for th those sites, uh, plant transport is dominating, and uh, the parameters that is uh, driving this process is uh, the, it's called TEVESH, and it has been defined by uh, Walter in her thesis, has uh, the capability of plant to transport methane um, from the soil to the atmosphere. And it's just a scale factor that can be defined between zero and 15. So when you do um, a single site optimization like here, the value for that parameters is very low. But when you do a multi-site optimization, then that value is getting much um, higher in comparison. And so that there is a need here to get that parameters mapped um, to uh, be able to represent the heterogeneity of the capability of plant to transport methane. So to conclude, we use data uh, assimilation uh, with a genetic algorithm approach uh, that provide a pretty good calibration for the sites that emitting um, an average amount of methane. So that was half of our site. Uh, but, uh, and uh, it also provide us um, the possibility to identify model limitation for end member site and a process that are missing in our model. So the perspective work will be to improve the carbon availability for uh, methanogenesis and to map uh, the parameters that represent the uh, methane plant transport efficiency. All right. Just before finishing, I just want to acknowledge uh, the funding agency and uh, the database that uh, provide us with the uh, uh, field data and also experimentalists that co-author this work and um, um, share their work with us. And thank you for your attention.